clockwise today. I'm going to be doing, you know, a little bit of a shorter undercut through here. Uh, I'm really into leaving the outlines a bit raw and a bit loose and then some really great curly uh, freehand work up at the top. This is actually my model. And all I've done is section off this top area into a triangle. It's slightly offset. What I've done is I've really tried to work with her growth patterns. She has a very strong swirly crown. So you can see my triangles a bit over to the side. I'm really trying these days, even though my you know, background is in precision, I'm really feeling some kind of raw edges at the moment. I'm really enjoying that slightly more raw kind of 90s grunge edge. So instead of making everything super perfect on the outlines, uh, I did actually go through with diagonal sections and work through my fingers to start with. But now I'm going into large two scissor over comb. I'm not trying to build up. So I'm not trying to build up graduation here. I'm trying to actually go the opposite way and remove some hair here so this hair can kind of fall over the top. So if you're just joining us, my name is Sally Rogerson and I have a hair company called SR Education. We do advanced training and we also have a hair school here in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, where we actually teach the licensing cosmetology course as well. So I hope you're all really good this morning and welcome. Jesse says hi. Live. Hi, Jesse. Deborah says hi. Uni says hi. Oh, hi, Uni. So many great people. It's nice to see everyone. Uh, definitely been off of these kind of platforms a little bit recently. So it's nice to be back and be with you. Hope everybody is doing well. I feel like, you know, it's the new year. So I feel like we're starting over and there's some good things on the horizon. I hope you feel that way too. From a haircut point of view, all I'm doing is taking vertical diagonal sections and instead of going in really tight on the bottom, normally I would go in through there. I'm actually doing this top panel first. So I'm not really too worried about the bottom outline yet. I'm much more interested in this top panel. So I'm coming through like this and then I'll decide on my outlines and how raw and how long I want to keep them afterwards. Stephen Stallon says hi. Hi. Oh, Alison lots King. of lots of old friends, huh? There's a lot of people I haven't seen for a long time as well. So, thank you for joining us today. So all I'm doing is really lifting that hair up and sitting this area in more, leaving a little bit more of this right now. Again, I'll deal with it afterwards. I'll go across the middle and then I'll come back the other side. So this hair, I'm, I'm actually really into cutting hair, not super, super clean. It kind of reminds me a little bit of being an assistant. Uh, you know, I was an assistant with Vidal Sassoon when I was 16. And during that time, you know, we were going into kind of a little bit of a grunge period. So we used to tell clients not to wash their hair and use all sorts of crazy different products to put in the hair and really try and make hair look a bit more next day or two or three days since someone cut it. So kind of back into that vibe again, not into everything being super, super, super clean. So I'm gonna come back from my other side. I'll just come around here so you guys can see. If any of you have any questions, I'm very open to talking about anything that you would like to talk about, whether it be technical hair cutting Jessie says that she loves the way you're breaking up the haircut. It's keeping it very creative. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, I think for me, the way that we approach haircutting in SR education, uh, it doesn't matter what the texture is. It doesn't matter what the length is. It's really about just organization. So knowing where you are, having a plan and executing it, you know, 
Once you really understand your theory, then obviously you can break your rules a little bit more. But uh, I find if you just kind of jump around in a haircut or you just keep cutting it and hope for the best, then, you know, it's going to be stressful for you. I think people are a little bit overwhelmed at the moment anyway with all the extra things that we have to do in the salon and all of that stuff. So the one thing that you can control is your haircut or your color or your styling. You know, you can really kind of put your um, emphasis into what you're doing and feel really proud of it because that's the one thing that you definitely can control right now. Yes, yeah, Steve, Stephen Statland was... Uh said, I heard you're having a color class with Antonio Pagano's in NYC. Oh, yes, Stephen, we are, yes. That one is nearly full. There is one spot left. I'm not doing a big sell, I'm just being honest. <laughs> we are, uh, my good friend Antonio has a beautiful salon in New York. Um, he opened just before the lockdown started, so I really, really admire him and send him all of our love for managing to stay open and make his salon a success. So well done, Antonio. Uh, we are actually having a, we have a brand new color, um, SR education color course. And we are doing a teacher training course for people that train their staff and train their team. And that's gonna be on June, I wanna say five, six, seven in New York. So it'd be so exciting to be in New York again. And uh, thank you, Antonio, for allowing us to use your space. Jesse asked, how would you approach more textured hair with this type of cut? Very good question. Um, this is a, a good example of um, a client that you get in with textured hair. Ashley has kind of straighter hair in the underneath, but very curly on the top. And so I'm going to actually cut the top more freehand and because the curl is not very strong in the underneath, I tend to use the underneath more technical. Um, you can go through the fingers. If it was very curly, then obviously you could go more freehand as well. Um, I'll be doing some scissor over comb too. But we do actually have a brand new texture class, which will be working with multi-texture like this. Also, um, you know, kind of a medium curl and also a really uh, high intensity, stronger, denser curl, so more coily. I'm actually going to Hawaii on Friday to um, do our, teach our very first SR texture class. It's going to be headed up by myself and also an amazing teacher that we have called Martina Nicholas. And she specializes in curly hair. So look out for that class. We have another one in Arizona. Um, and then in Charlotte, we have one as well coming up soon. Anytime you want to look at our stuff, we do have classes coming out and everything now. We're getting a bit more back to normal. Still small classes, obviously, but uh, sallyrogerson.com is where you'd find all of that stuff. So if I was working on more textured hair, I could definitely work with more freehand, more scissor over comb, even more clipper work, right? I tend to cut curly and textured hair, both technically and also freehand. So it just depends on the texture. So all I'm doing now is forcing myself to not cut this bottom area because I want to just keep it more raw and freehand, but I'm still trying to analyze the hair and decide how slim do I want it down there and then how much texture do I want on the ends. I don't want it to look bulky. So I'm crossing back over from side to side to slim this area down. Thank you guys for joining us. If you're just joining us and if I don't know you already, my name is Sally Rogerson. So thank you so much for coming here and seeing what we're up to this morning. Also, if you're watching afterwards, uh, if you have any questions, you can, you know, put them in the comments and we will try our best to get back to you. Otherwise, you can always reach out to us on Instagram. It's where we do most of our talking, isn't it? 
Yes, Dennis said lovely, lovely work and scissor control as usual. Oh, thank you so much, Dennis. That's lovely. So nice to be with everybody again. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just feeling good, isn't it? All right, so obviously there's a lot of density here. It's too dense right now. So I'm gonna start to go into a little bit of scissor over comb. Uh, not necessarily to cut it shorter. Scissor over comb is not always just to cut it off. Obviously, if you want it to go in shorter and tighter, then you would start a bit lower. So if I wanted to sit this in really tight on my scissor over comb, then I'm obviously going to start at the bottom. If I'm trying to keep this shorter and leave some outline work, then I still start at the bottom, but then I'll start moving up and I won't start cutting until a bit higher up. So I'm leaving this stuff out on purpose. And I'm just choosing where I want scissor over comb. I can also go back through and start to do some pointing. Ashley does have a lot of hair. It tends to gather and get very uh, solid. So by going in and just doing a little bit of pointing in my scissor over comb, it's gonna loosen it up a little bit. And again, you know, we have just colored Ashley's hair. She's one of our regular photographic models. Um, but I on purpose didn't kind of do the roots and everything because again, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just really into that kind of slightly more grungy, grown out, not everything perfect kind of look at the moment. Dana it, says she loves how feminine this super short look can be. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Super, she said. Super. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's great to be back teaching again with everybody, you know. Um, I think, obviously, online has been a necessity for so many people and probably still is, but uh, everyone I talk to is just, like, mad for being in-person class, if it's safe, right? But just wanting to get out there with our community and with our fellow hairstylists and do something together, right? The energy you get from that is amazing. All I'm gonna do now is rest on my fingers or rest on wherever you want to. And I'm just gonna gently stroke the hair with the scissor tips. Um, it's really tiny amount of hair that's coming off, but all it does is just take some of that bulk away. So I'm literally opening and closing the scissor like tiny, 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 and just going down when I cut down. So it's like, just stroking the hair, but there is hair coming off. This is great if you want to slim something down that's bulky. And it's also really great if you're just trying to transition from short into long. Danny Ben says, hi, Sally, loving this cut. Oh, hi, Danny. So mm -hmm. nice to um, have you on board. I will text you back one day. <laughs> you texted me yesterday. I never got to it, I'm sorry. Been a bit busy around here, hasn't it? We've got a lot going on in the academy at the minute, which is fantastic. We have our 1,000 hour um, license course here in Arizona. Uh, you can get a hair only license. I know some other states are starting to do that as well, right? California and um, there's a few others. I think Georgia <coughs> does it, Dallas, yeah. uh, not Dallas, so um, Texas. Shauna asked, could that point cutting over a comb um, you're doing be accomplished with a textured shear? Very good question, actually. Thank you. Um, yes, it could, but you would have to go horizontal with it. If you went in like I am with the points, you know, generally I find that those scissors are more blunted on the ends. So by doing that with your thinning shear, then yes, you could do. I, I'm not against thinning shears. I just don't necessarily feel like I need any other things, you know? Have scissor and comb will travel, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like, I don't want loads of extra. I don't want 300 pairs of scissors, thank you. Don't look at my thing over here. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I feel like you can do so much just with one thing, right? Awesome. But yes, you absolutely could. And I do use thin scissors sometimes just for fun. So thank you for answering. Thank you for your question. Jessie says she's so happy to see all the classes happening again safely as well. 
yes absolutely it's um it's been difficult we did try last year to do some and we did do a few but you know it was very difficult to control you know whether they were going to go ahead or not and it just got a bit stressful so i'm just gonna stop <laughs> just gonna wait until it's good to go you know hopefully we'll be moving on now okay so then as you can see you've got some of her natural color coming through in the underneath as well so i'm just going to go in and go in at the roots a little bit and that's going to lighten that whole situation <laughs> Um, it's very hard for me to, I, I love the look of this rawness. I'm really into it right now, but it is very hard for me to not cut that off in my heart. Cause really, I just want to bash that off. Do you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> but, uh, that's just how I'm wired. I like to cut things pretty sharp, <laughs> but I, I'm just kind of, I don't know. I'm just trying to. Going to something a little different this year. Charlene Beckford said, hello there, loving that comb. Which one is it? Oh, hi, Charlene. This one is Wires Park. Um, SR Education, we do have our own brand in combs. Honestly, if I had glasses on, I could tell you YS, uh, I think it says 338. I think it's 338. Great. I just want to also, I don't know if anyone's seen these, but I just want to say thank you so much to Passion Beauty and YS Park for sending me these wonderful, look at this, woo! So glamorous. Very uh, regal. Huh? Very regal. It's very regal, yeah, yes, I love it, yes. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. I've been using them and I'll use them today as well. We've got some new silver and gold stuff coming out. We do only use YS Park um, on our combs, clips, etc. Um, I do use a larger tooth comb because I'm scissor over combing, um, textured hair, and I'm on purpose not trying to go short, do you know what I mean, which is difficult. So by using larger teeth, I can control that a bit more, if that makes sense. If I use a smaller comb, it's just like clipper guards. So my smaller combs are going to go shorter. They're going to be a little harder to control as well sometimes. So. It's okay to scissor over comb and work with a large tooth comb or a jumbo comb. Um, I also work a lot with the love combs, uh, which is why it's park, I don't know. It's called a love comb. I'm not sure what the number is, but I love to scissor over comb with that as well, to be honest. Just gives me more control. She says she loves their extra long tail comb as well. Yes, absolutely. That one's a game changer. Yeah, 100%, because you can really get in there um, I don't know. I just, I've always worked with Wires Park. I just think, I love their, um, design element, you know? Yeah. As soon as it's safe, my first trip, apart from Hawaii on Friday, but my first international trip is Japan and South Korea. That's my goal for this year, if it's safe. That's what I want to do. Go and catch up with some friends from there. And, you know, for me, travel is the most inspiring thing. It really helps me kind of get into that creative headspace. So I'm definitely missing going and doing that traveling and getting exposed to different things, you know? I just want to be walking across that crossroads in Harajuku, looking at all those Amazing outfits. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I want to do right now. Do you want to come, Ashley? Sure. <laughs> You're paying for it, don't Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to go around and do some hair shows and modeling, obviously. You'll have to grow your hair, yeah. and then we can cut it like five times at different places. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. So it's a good time. Yeah. It'll get cut a lot. <laughs> I've actually done that when I've been on tour with models before. <laughs> Just grow it out and then cut it on every show. So I've just got a little bit more growth patterns uh, in this middle area. So I'm going back in with my fingers just to get a bit more control in there. And then I'll go back in with my clip, uh, scissor over comb pointing again.
Hope you're all doing well this morning. What day is it? Tuesday, right? No. Wednesday, Tuesday, is it Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday. I think. Dennis asks, would you have done this all scissor over comb if you weren't teaching it here? Um, mm, a bit of both, to be honest. I've been cutting Ashley's hair for a long time. Okay. So I know what it's gonna do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if I wasn't trying to leave some hair here and seeing how it developed, then uh, I probably, yes, would have just gone in and either worked with clippers. I could also have worked with scissor over comb if I knew I was going short. The only reason I'm doing a bit of both is I'm trying to work on that hair and keep a bit of length. Normally we do go very short on here. All right, so what do you do um, with that hairline? It's very active. Something very like active. That. That's <laughs> such a good way to describe yes. it. That is such a good one. <laughs> Very active. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm doing. I'm visually looking at the hair. I have the combination of the active hairline mm -hmm. and also the combination of the different colors and the natural color coming in. Um, so I'm just visually working it. Obviously, I don't have a mirror here, so I'm just making it up. I can't see anything, but uh, I am just working it through, visually seeing what it's going to do. And then just, as I said, slicing into that. It's this okay. area, obviously, that's tricky. And then some hairlines you can't leave a bit of length in. You know what I mean? What I try and do is, you can see this area is growing together. So if you remember that short hair pushes long hair. So when you're slicing, if you try and slice it so it pushes away from its direction. Like, for example, this is pushing this way. So I'm slicing it away, okay, away from each other. And then this goes this way so I can slice that away. Do you see what I mean? So it's not just random madness. There is some thought process behind there. Like for example, if someone grows really strong into a kind of ducktail and they don't like it, then I would start cutting in the middle and put that as the shortest bit because the short hair will push the long hair away. If somebody, has a hairline that grows that way and you want it to go this way, then I'll cut it this way. Okay. So you can always use different sectioning techniques and methods to push hair around. Okay. I'm liking that for now. I could do that for another three days, obviously, but it's uh, a little boring to watch, as we all know. So I'm just stroking the hair with my scissors. And then I'll go into the top. I'm gonna to let the top kind of come out. I've dried it already. I'm leaving all these raw edges on purpose. Is there anywhere that anyone else is really itching to go to when they feel like they're ready to travel not that's popped up yet no shauna says love how you explain your methods oh thank you so much <laughs> all right let me stop obsessing i'm quite obsessive person so i have to get myself to move on Jessie says she wants to go to Spain. Spain, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My family live in Spain, so. Hola. Hola. I'll be there hopefully in the summer. But we're so busy, aren't we? I mean, it's yes. like my schedule is so booked up. I don't know when I'm going to fit anything like that in. <laughs> so behind the camera, we have Cole. Cole is our newest SR. Um, educator. Hello, and hello. Hello, hello. So she is just started and she's doing her teacher training with SR Education. She's also doing her um, instructor certification here in Scottsdale, which is 350 hours, right? Yes. So um, very excited. Yes, I'm very excited too. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Barbie's, Barbie says she wish you, wish <laughs> you could do my hair she said i'll do it <laughs> come to scottsdale at the minute i'm really enjoying cutting people's hair so um i'm doing a few clients but mainly i'm doing 
So we have a lot of house models because, you know, we have a hair show as well called Thrive Sessions. So we have, um, you know, photographs and collections that we do. So we do still have, obviously, a lot of house models that we're looking after. Um, so you can see I've just dropped this top area down. I'm going to cut it in a more textured freehand way. Uh, I love how unruly it is. I'm not trying to make it like super perfect. I'm just going to put a little bit of diffuser into it for a second. Shauna says that colour and texture is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. And Jesse said, fabulous haircut. Thank you. Charlene Beckford, amazing. Um, and then I put in the styling cream this is before you know before we dried it and everything and a little bit of repair oil so those are my favorite things right now and just leaving the head quite unruly and big and then I'm just gonna work on some freehand uh, we've been prepping, like I said, for the texture class, so I've been very into curly hair at the moment. And I used to always love doing a lot of curly hair, so it's kind of really nice to get back to it. Um, not going to do anything too much, but I do want to give that kind of rawer uh, look. I don't want it to be too super perfect. I'm not sectioning it in a perfect way. I'm sectioning it just with my fingers. I'm gonna, you know, observe what the hair is doing, twist it in the direction, open and close my scissors. And obviously, directionally, do you want to work it off the face? Do you wanna work it onto the face? So you've gotta really think about when you are working freehand, um, opening and closing my scissor. Obviously, I could also be using a razor whatever is your weapon of choice, right? Um, so I like to work with my scissors, but whatever you feel happiest with. Uh, so really thinking about how the curl is curling, visually going with it. This is slicing from the middle and also taking some length off on the ends. You might, however, want to maintain all of your length and maybe do almost like a scissor, uh, like a back comb with your scissor. I'm opening and closing. This is going to give me more of a uh, shorter area in the root and maintain the length. So that's going to be good to give more separate curls, if that makes sense. Uh, you've got to realize that curly hair tends to curl together and curl around each other. So you'll definitely find that by leaving a bit of space around the curls, it gives them a chance and an opportunity to be more separate. And then, you know, obviously you can just kind of freehand as well. Just want to talk about one thing um, that's new for us. 
well, we've got quite a new few, few new things, but the news thing here in Scottsdale is we have a new four week finishing class. So this is starting in April. We'll probably have another one in June as well, I think. But um, we have a new four week class. Uh, do you want to just go on there, Tom? Um, and it's a finishing class for people that have just come out of school, but also it might just be for you if you've been out of the industry for a while or you feel like you just want to get back into it. And it's one week, no, sorry, two weeks of hair cutting, all lengths, all different types, one week of color, um, and then the other week is texture. We have social media training as well by the Hair Nerds. So we've partnered her up with the Hair Nerds to do our social media training and our marketing training. And also there's um, a certification that allows you to be a SR um, certified stylist. So if you're really looking to fast track your career, it doesn't matter what state you're from, we have a lot of people coming to do it from a different place as well. Uh, but if you really just want that four week intensity and get back into your get back into your training, get back into your game, then think about coming to join us. We have a lot of people come from different places. Um, and again, you can always text us messages about anything like that, but it's all on the website, sallyrogerson.com. For those of you that come to our hair show Thrive Sessions, I'm thinking about having another one later in the year, but I'm not 100% sure. I know everyone keeps asking me about it, but we'll get there. Just want to make sure it's safe and everyone can come. It's looking good, right? Yeah. yeah. I shouldn't say that, should I? That sounds it's looking great. <laughs> well, when you've got a model like Ashley, it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I first cut Ashley's hair from down here when she was about 15, didn't I? Yeah. It's a good Just day. cut it off. <laughs> it felt lighter. Yeah. And then, thank you for being with us ever since. Thank you. You've been all sorts of colours and all sorts of lengths. And I wouldn't have known what to do if I just left. <laughs> <laughs> You've got such great hair. Todd Baylor says, woo, thrive. Oh, Todd, Todd, Todd. <laughs> Hopefully, Todd, I'll see you soon. I want you to come to Arizona for our texture class. Todd is one of our wonderful SR educators. It's time to get out on the road again, I think. Todd has a great salon called Firefly on Bainbridge Island. That's where we get our models from. We seem to live on Bainbridge Island. Good good air out there I think yeah <laughs> all right we're getting there it's really I, obviously I don't have a mirror so I am just doing it by eye but you would a hundred percent be using your um, mirror really looking at what you wanted to do and not tearing the hair and cutting the hair if you want to use your scissors like a razor then just use a razor right but I'm actually cutting the hair. This could go on all day, obviously. I'll bring it to a close soon. Does anyone have any final questions for me about anything before we start to do a bit of styling and stuff? It's looking great. Thank you. I do tend to take like a, a larger tooth comb when I'm doing curly hair, especially if I'm doing more editorial or something like that. Because personally, I, I don't like it to be, it doesn't have to be super perfect. I like it a bit, you know, loose, maybe back comb it a touch, just get a bit of, um, not frizz, but I like a bit of texture in there, a bit of grit, you know. So just doing a little back combing with my fabulous comb. Can I take this off? Yeah. I'm just going to take this off and do a bit of styling. Mm -hmm. 
Nydia says she loves the hairstyle and she's currently a student of hair and design. Is she really? Yes. In um, Oklahoma? No, where is she? Where are you at, Nydia? The go comb, that's um, Wires Park, right? It's, yeah, Wires Park. The, uh, it's a new comb that they've just brought. I don't actually know if it's out. I just was lucky enough to get one to That's an Alison, and she loves the haircut. It is in Fresno. Fresno! Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah, it's a matching set, so thank you. Uh, Fresno, well, she can come <laughs> and visit when she's ready, right? Yes. Um, we have a lot of two-day classes. Too. Oh, the four. We could be great for a student, wouldn't it? Um, all right, so I'm just going to go in and do a bit of styling now. Um, I do still use a bit of hairspray, you know, Formula 18 hairspray or a dry spray. Or even a dry shampoo at this point is good. Shauna says, thanks for the video. Cheers from Canada. Oh, thank you so much. I haven't been to Canada for ages either. I need to get back there. That's like my home from home. I think we're doing a class you're in up Toronto, there, aren't, you? aren't we? Yeah, you're doing oh, two yeah, up there. Oh yeah, we're doing a class in Toronto in um, July, actually. That's over at Metro Beauty. So any of you that are in that area, contact Metro Beauty to join the class. Danny Benz loves the finished look. Oh, thank you, Danny. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of product underneath, a little bit of the repair oil. Um, this actually kind of goes into the hair. It doesn't like sit really greasy, so it disappears. So I don't feel like it's, you know, really oily. I don't like to put a lot of oil on curly hair. I know it's a lot of people's kind of go-to, but Gwen Perry says, to. in Kean College Hair Salon, my students are watching awesome oh, hairstyles. Hi! Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Where are they? Hmm. I thought you said Cancun. I was like, yeah. yeah. Kean College oh, Hair Salon. Got it. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. So you can see kind of my final look. Um, I really just tried to keep this a little bit loose and softer and a bit kind of raw on the edges. And I kind of like that at the moment, you know, and obviously this hair can just be a bit looser over there, sorry. Um, Ashley's hair kind of has a mind of its own and I like to go with that rather than try and tame it. Oh, I've made you really hairy now. Uh, can we stand her up, is that all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right, come stand up over here. We'll just take the chair out. Stand here for me, Ashley. And just uh, flip that way. All right, so, whew. so this is my um, finished look. And Ashley's one of our house models. I've uh, been doing her hair for a long time, but the hair still surprises me, to be honest with you. You know, I never quite know what it's gonna do. So I'm really just working with it. Uh, I've taken like a triangular section, kept this quite short through here, left it a bit more raw. The top area, I really just freehanded. And as you can see, just kept some very different random lengths on there. And um, just kind of went with it, really. Turn around for us, give her a little. That's right, give us a little bit of Ashley pose. A bit of shoulder. Yes. Um, just stay there for a minute, and then if you can just kind of keep that and then just, you know, go around really slowly. The students watching are in Newfoundland, Canada. Oh, wow, hi. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. William Perry says, gorgeous and organic. Yes, organic, that's a great word for it as well. Yes. Lots of great words coming yes. out today. <laughs> organic and active. Active hairline. Yeah. 